Sergeant Kep here with Company D, 2nd United States Sharpshooters, along with Captain Ethan Whitehall, Company D, 2nd United States Sharpshooters. And we're about ready to go into our uh, winter uh, camp for the year. And with the holidays approaching, we wanted to make sure that we take the time to go through our gear for those of you looking to join our unit or maybe getting into reenacting as a hobby for the first time. Uh, Captain, uh, you've been working really hard on your impression over the last few years. Would you like to kind of walk us through the, the typical stuff that a, a Berdan officer would be carrying uh, yeah. during uh, the campaign? So, start with, officer would have worn typical federal officer's uniform with either the standard infantry blue uh, fatigue blouse or the green frock coat, which is just like the standard infantry kind, except there's no piping or anything whatsoever. Cuff is functional with three buttons. Officer's rank, occasionally they would wear a sash, mostly for dress occasions. The sword belt with either a private purchase or a government issue 1850 foot officer sword. They would have worn either private purchase or federal issue enlisted green trousers, either issue brogans or Jefferson boots, or uh, since it's winter quarters, it's rainy, it's muddy, snow, they would have worn boots. They would have carried standard infantry haversack for all their mess equipment since they were officers in the army and they were on the march. They would have carried all their foodstuffs, extra bags for food, utensils. They would have either had a federal issue canteen or a private purchase kidney style where it fit the body a little better. Yeah, and if I can uh, interrupt right there too, one thing you'll notice in our gear is uh, we don't have the common sort of reenactor blue uh, canteen cover. Yeah. You wouldn't waste uh, suiting uh, fabric to cover your canteen. And so we uh, generally had these, this jean wool was much more common for uh, Civil War soldiers to be carrying. The other thing you'll notice is we don't have the ubiquitous chain on our stopper. Uh, there were only a few manufacturers uh, that made a small amount of blue canteen covered canteens with the metal chain. The other thing too, in all the Army regulations, you'll see that our gear is carefully labeled uh, based on period uh, regulations. This also helps to make sure you can find your canteen when uh, the captain sends us on a water detail, we can get our canteens back to everyone. And we also have our initials. Uh, so we have our uh, regiment, our company, and our line number based on uh, our roll call. So, and then you on to your, your haversack, which is quite a bit different than say mine as a first sergeant. So officer would have occasionally worn officer's haversack, either made out of a tarred canvas, which made it waterproof, or the fancier kind since being a captain, I have a higher pay grade, be leather. And foodstuffs wasn't usually carried in this. This is more my traveling office. So I have my notebook to send field notes, sketches, a signal whistle. So if we're split into squads, platoons, we'd be able to communicate. Uh, soldier's housewife, this is the sewing kit. Every Most soldiers would have carried them, being an officer and liking to fix my own gear. I carry my own tobacco pouch since tobacco use was very, very popular during the time. But smoking your store-bought camels uh, was not. So that is a that's something you keep out of sight if you're trying to go for a more progressive or campaign impression. Take the time, get a pipe. It'll make a world of difference if you have to feed your habit. Yeah, that's for sure. Also have the. Uh, field glasses. Not all officers carried these, being sharpshooters, long-range shooting, but also going on scouting patrols, whatnot. Having a good pair of field glasses is a must. I can't really list how many times they've come in handy at reenactments that we've gone to, but the battalion loves them. They've even borrowed them from us. Also have period comb, just because being an officer, I'm supposed to be the role model of what everyone should look up to and also the face of the unit. You look your best, they're gonna assume that you guys are the best. And period regulations put a high standard on, on soldier hygiene. It's yes. not as common as we would today, but it was uh, there was a high uh, price put on the value of keeping your hands and feet clean and dry, along as keeping uh, your hair clean 
or short to prevent lice and disease from getting into the camps. And that's pretty much it for the officer's haversack. They sometimes would have carried papers, uh, stores, forms, that kind of stuff. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, and the big difference with his, like this is sort of his mobile field office on the go, but he would still be, you know, ne required to carry rations, which is pretty much what uh, NCOs or a private's haversack is almost exclusively used for is the carrying of the required rations for that campaign. Whether it's a daily ration or it's a three day or more ration, depending on how much marching is going on. And there's some really great resources available on our website or elsewhere on the web on what were period correct rations that you could carry in simple cloth poke sacks and do uh, at, at an event for a really good sort of impression experience to kind of eat and feel what the soldiers were eating and feeling at the time of the war. Uh, in our next video, we are going to go into our knapsacks and reveal some of the stuff that we care, carry uh, into battle and around camp. Thank you. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe and uh, let us know your comments uh, below.